In eight weeks of the 2024 season, the Dallas Cowboys have hit one of their lowest points since the 2020 season, making me reminisce about the past three previous years. We were all pretty lucky. Yes, I know they didn't end up winning the Super Bowl. There was only one playoff win in the total of those three years, heartbreaking losses, and the drought keeps extending year after year. But at least those regular seasons ended at 12 and 5. Those seasons had a lot to cheer for and it's good to appreciate the regular season success that they had when now looking at one that might not be as favorable. Let alone not many teams stay consistently good and the Cowboys as of right now are on the top of the regressing teams from the previous year. One constant that has carried over to this year is getting beat by the 40 Niners. I mean, it's a yearly tradition now, practically a yearly holiday for 49ers fans. I can only imagine how frustrating it could be for the players that have been on this team for the past four to five years, because it's sure depressing as a fan seeing this team fail time and time and time and time again against the same team. The biggest concern coming out of this loss was how this came out of the bye. They had an extra week to prepare, to heal up, and yet still got punched in the mouth. I know they came back, but let's be honest, they looked terrible in the third quarter, leading to yet again digging themselves into a hole too deep, something that's starting to become a trait for this 2024 team. They don't need to win every single quarter, but they got to stop getting in these vast deficits and having the offense stall out until the other opposing defense goes into prevent. It's not a good look, and I'll be honest, my belief in this team right Right now is gone. I'm still pulling for them, but my expectations going into each game is very low because they are not a winning team right now. They're uninspiring, uninteresting to watch, and just drama filled. Just look at this last week with Jerry's comments, the practice environment drama getting populated, and even the Trayvon Diggs D's nuts. It's not looking good, and there's nothing really much to say more about it other than they are a 3-4 and four team that needs a lot of work, but still alive. But if they don't start winning soon, the division will be long gone, and their postseason aspirations, yeah. It's just all going to lead to another fun offseason is the way I'm going to put it. The last topic I want to talk about is Dak. I see a lot, and I mean a lot of people pointing the finger at Dak, saying he's regressed badly, and it's totally fair to put part of the blame on him. And I see why people aren't as tolerant of his mistakes after his contract. Dak does have to play better. He can't turn the ball over like he has been doing, especially in this last game. It can't happen no matter what his price tag is, but we have to look at the whole picture. It's obvious Dak is not in one of the most favorable situations, which many people blame his contract for. There is validity to that, but it's the GM's job to get the franchise players signed under contract and build a solid supporting cast around them. Paying a franchise quarterback is what you have to do in the league, and making it an excuse for cutting back talent on the roster is one of the reasons why they are at where they are at. I probably can't even fathom how difficult of a job it is, and I understand it makes it more complicated, requiring them to rely on young players. But at the same time, it can't cripple the front office like it seems it has. Or to be used as an excuse or scapegoat for mistakes. To me, it kind of looks like the front office suspected that to fill a lot of the holes in this roster, along with having young talent produce fast, which so far... Both have not been meeting expectations. They need a solution, but getting rid of Dak is not one of them and shouldn't be. In my opinion, the biggest thing other than the turnovers Dak needs to improve on is using his legs. His versatility, the dual threat, has looked extinct in 2024. Right now, he looks so immobile to run and so unwilling to run that it's, it's a deficit for this offense. Just look at last year. He was at his best when extending drives with his legs, getting out of the pocket, 
throwing on the run. That element has just been vanished. And I hope, I hope it will start returning here soon. Will that even be enough? I don't know, but I really do think it would boost his game in this offense as a whole, just like a consistent run game, O-line, and getting many players back from injury. Either way, this next game against the Atlanta Falcons is not going to get any easier, so I just hope, I just hope that they can make it a competitive four-quarter game. Thank you for watching. Peace.